All right, here we go. Good luck. So, get these blinds. I'm just gonna pick a vehicle at random here. You can kind of extrapolate. Um, you know, even though yours might differ slightly, the one that you get, um, I'm going with the uh, little fire engine here. Okay, so the first step to any kind of structural drawing is, of course, like with anything, you want to actually study your object. So just take a minute. Kind of examine the proportions of the object. Kind of look at what you're dealing with. Remember that you are going to have this at a isom, you know, that good three-quarter angle that's good for isometric drawing that we've kind of talked about in here. You find it, want to find that sweet spot. Um, so from this downward, I mean, the camera's pointing straight down. So when I have this looking at me, I mean, you're going to see it from a different object than I'm, that I'm drawing it at. So for the purposes of the drawing, this is about the angle that it's going to be at. And you want the front of the object to kind of be pointing to the front. Okay. And this is a good object because it, there's not much to it. It's very simple, right? You can almost visualize the block of wood that this was carved from. Now, uh, last week I reviewed briefly, remember this, we talked about additive versus subtractive uh, methods of drawing. Additive means that you are building a piece at a time on top of each other in a, you know, in a sequence. Like you're kind of going piece by piece until you have what you want. Um, subtractive means that you are drawing the entire block and then you're taking away parts of it. You're subdividing and then you eventually wind up, you know, as if, you know, imagine you're, you have a solid piece of wood or, or stone and you're chiseling away at it. All right, so... We're going to actually combine both of these. We're going to do both additive and subtractive on this particular object. So I'm going to have the object kind of off to the side pointing in this direction. All right, so enough of, enough of that. So now we'll start. It's going to be up here where you can't see it on the side of my cart. Okay, so... It's a little crooked, but we'll we'll figure it out. So I'm gonna start, of course, with my anchor line, like I always do. And you're gonna put it towards the bottom of the paper because you want to account for the length of your object, right? You don't want to start it up here, you're gonna run out of room. So towards the bottom, and maybe even a little bit further down if you if you think you need it. All right, so looking at my object, I've got a really long rectangular block. So I want to account for this whole length of this chassis of the, of the truck, as well as the height. I'm gonna actually make my box as tall as the highest part of the object, which is up here. So I'm looking at my angle. I want a nice, like I said, three quarter, eh, like a 30 degree angle is best, but you know. Something in that territory is good. Remember I am, you can't see it, but I am actually moving my whole arm up through my shoulder as I'm drawing, that helps. Okay, now remember, you want to finish off this almost kind of parallelogram kind of diamond shape, and you want opposing 
edges to be parallel with one another. So everything going along the same axis is parallel. So this is parallel with this because they're on the same axis. So that means this will be parallel with that. It's okay if your lines go a little over. Something like that. Now we're going to go up on that Z axis. Again, make all those lines parallel with each other. You want it basically parallel with the side of the paper, at the edges of the paper. And I'm just keeping my mark making kind of loose, loose and sketchy in the beginning. And it doesn't need to be really dark either, just kind of light. I'm making it maybe a little darker. Um, a little bit of wobble there. Sorry about that. And we're going to go up to about here. Now, you might, and when I say might, means probably you will make an error when determining the size of your box. You might draw this box and find that it is too long or too tall or not tall enough, whatever. It's okay. You can adjust afterwards. It takes some practice to kind of get it right on the first guess and I have trouble with that as well. But that's more or less in the range of what you want, okay? Now we have, go back to our object. We've got this shape. If you look at your object from the side like this, you're going to see like a, a kind of like a silhouette of your object. So for this object, it's going to look like this for... A different one, it'll look differently. But basically, you want to look at it from the side. You want a side projection. And then what you're going to do is you're going to try to draw this shape on the front side of your box. Now, I'm going to kind of subdivide it. I'm not just going to start drawing it like cold. I'm going to like try to measure it a little bit as best as I can. So I'm going to like split this up into two sections, the front section and then the back. So just by looking at my object, I'm going to say, okay, the front takes up about this much. And then the back is going to come about there. It doesn't go all the way to the top. And then I've got some rounded edges, right? It's not perfectly angular. So we've got something in this neighborhood. All right, that's pretty close. This, all this up here is going to wind up being gone. We're going to get rid of it. Before we can do that, though, remember we want to draw through our forms. We want to draw through to the back. And remember, the key to doing all of these subdivisions is you want to make everything parallel with the larger box. So when I come across here to the back, I want to make sure that all these lines are parallel with all of these lines on this axis. If I'm going across this way, same deal. If I'm going up and down, ditto. All right? And if you do it right, and if you do it like where all the corners meet up, you should have a, a, you know, a point at which you can say, okay, if I come back to here, then I can take this to here, 
And then from this corner, even though it's kind of overlapping with the front, I can go up from there and meet that point. And then you would eventually round out those corners as well to make it match. Okay. So now it's starting to look more like our engine. We actually have a little bump on top for the, I guess that's the siren. Now there's a couple ways you could do this. If my box was maybe a tiny bit taller, I could have ended this line a little bit. I might still be able to do that. I'm going to just mark off the center point at where that um, little siren light is going to be. And I'm just going to bring this down a little bit more. See, I'm kind of just lowering that line just a bit. Now I can go up in the middle, come across. like so. I also have a little bump here, I guess, for the front bumper, this little indentation that sticks out. So I will also account for that. Just draw a line going across. So this kind of comes down, comes out. All right, so it's not that difficult to kind of get the body shape on these uh, on these objects. This is a really, like I said, really simple object. <clears throat> so now we've got to do the wheels. So up till now, we've pretty much done a subtractive process with this. All right, we made a block, subdivided it, and took took parts away. So we would, now in a regular drawing, we would erase these lines. But remember, this is a structural drawing. It's in this, using this crating technique, you want to leave all of your foundation lines, all your construction lines. All right, so now we need to draw the wheels. And this is where we're going to switch to additive now. We're going to add these wheels on. Now, if we look at our object, we can see that our wheels are centered in a certain distance. And really, if we visualize this as one cylinder running all the way through the object, um, we can then cut the wheels off. And give them a sense of thickness here. You see how, I mean, they're not flat wheels. They're very, they're very thick. All right, so we want to look at where the center of each wheel is located. So if I draw, like, imagine a straight line going from the center and going straight up. That line's going to be about in line with this, almost the center of this uh, siren. So I'm going to draw that line. Again, keep it straight. And then as far as the width of the object goes, um, the center of that wheel is just above the bottom of the object. So I would say somewhere in here. Okay, now the back wheel is about here. So if I'm looking at this top edge here, that's about where that point would come up. So on my drawing, I'm just going to mark off a little point and then come down. 
and I want to make sure that I am keeping it lined up with this one. So I want to draw another line going across, but parallel with, with everything else on that axis and draw another dot there. So that's the approximate location of the center of both of my wheels. So now that I've got that spaced out, I'm gonna start making my cylinders. But remember, before I can make ellipses, I gotta draw squares. Now, the bottom of each wheel comes out just past the bottom of the chassis of the car. So there's a little gap when it's down and it's you know rolling on the ground. So I'm just gonna again look at the object and determine that mm, I've got I'm gonna need a square about if this is my center. About like that. Okay. And I'm going to do the same for the back wheel. So I want the bottom of this to line up with the bottom of this. And I also want the top of each wheel to line up with this. Wow, that movie next door is really loud. Okay. So this is where a lot of students go wrong. Is there a reason why you're not even looking at that? Okay. Let me close this door here, sorry. All right, here's, here's where a lot of students go wrong. They will draw a box around, you know, for their wheel, but they're not drawing it parallel with the rest of the box. Like they'll draw, you know, they'll do this, but then everything else is going this way, right? So you've got to make sure that your box is parallel with the larger boxes, okay? Now you're gonna draw through the form. Again, keeping everything parallel. Do the best you can, best job you can. Come to this back edge right here, come to there. And then from that point, go up. And if you have done it correctly, you should wind up with a square or a kind of a parallelogram, I should say. These two should be pretty much the same size, front and back. Okay? And now you're going to do the same with the back wheel. Make it parallel. Draw through the form. And actually, you can go a little past the line to account for the outer thickness. But, I mean, you can either do that now or later. It doesn't matter. Like, you can, once you have this drawn, then take it out a little bit further. Or you can go a little further when you first draw it. It's, it's up to you. But remember, you just want to give it a little bit of thickness because the wheel has thickness to it. Again, go up from the corners. And this is where things start to get a little con a little challenging because, again, you've got all these overlapping lines and it can get hard to, to see. Like, 
this line of the square is overlapping this line of the uh, the front. Again, draw across as well to make sure the heights of the boxes line up. And there you go. All right, you with me? We're almost done. Now we're going to, before we draw the ellipses, I want to draw a second box behind the ones we just drew. So what we're going to wind up with are two ellipses that are kind of overlapping each other. But first we're going to have the, the two boxes overlapping each other. Just like that. So now all that's left is we're going to round out these wheels by drawing ellipses inside. So remember, we subdivide horizontally and vertically. And again, you can do diagonal divisions if you feel like you need them. And then you just want the, the edges of your ellipses on each of these curves to just gently touch the edges of your box. You don't want to draw it inside, right? Like don't, <laughs> don't, don't do like this where you're, like I said, you're, you're drawing, you're going through all the trouble of drawing this box and then you just kind of do that. You've got to make the ellipse fill out that box. So you're, you are, in essence, making a box that is in proportion to these wheels. So you've got to be able to see how big is that wheel compared to the rest of the object. All right, draw through. Make sure that... your other subdivisions are parallel and then you're going to do another ellipse on the back and again if you have done it correctly you should wind up with two ellipses that are the same size and shape and they should be nice and smooth they shouldn't have pointy edges they shouldn't be egg shaped or anything lopsided or weird All right, then you do the same on the back. And again, from my viewpoint, I can't even see these back wheels, but in a structural drawing, when you're drawing through forms, you've got to draw it even if you can't see it, right? Because it's part of the structure of the form. Remember, we are doing volumetric drawing here. We are, we are drawing the space the object occupies and we're trying to show the structure of this object. So you draw back edges even if you can't see them. All right, then once you connect your edges, you should have wheels that line up. And if I draw a line parallel through the center, those two centers should line up. And if they don't, then you did something wrong somewhere. Okay. Carry through to the back. Like so. Like so. And move 
got one more wheel. And then if we want to, we can draw a smaller square inside and do another ellipse to account for the, there's like a big screw in the middle of each of these wheels to kind of hold it in place. All right? And now it's just a matter of, again, we're not erasing anything, but we want to give a sense of line quality to the drawing. And so all of our final lines we want to accentuate and darken. Camera's probably getting really wobbly right now. And there we go. There's our fire engine. Okay. So, I know this seems like a lot, and, you know, there's a lot of visual information in there, but just remember to kind of compartmentalize it, take it piece by piece. Um, try not to, you know, when you're looking at all of this at once, it, it, it does get kind of overwhelming. But remember, we're starting off with just simple blocks. Sometimes we're turning those blocks into cylinders. Sometimes we're leaving them the way they are, but we're just subdividing and taking a little bit away from them. All right. But if you remember the process that we've been practicing in class, like all last week of just making boxes and just being, you know, making isometric boxes, um, you'll be okay. And that's why I was really stressing the importance last week of you guys repeating that over and over again as much as possible to get it kind of drilled into your head like that, those certain five steps of how to make an isometric box. It's just that now we're taking those boxes and maybe we're Stretching them out a little bit, making them a little taller, but it's the same principle. Okay? All right. Are there any questions about any of this? Okay. Well, that's pretty much it. So I'm going to...